great news, Ford has brought back the Bronco. Yes, this is not a Bronco. But with Chevrolet watering down the Blazer nameplate, Kia is doing its part to bring the K5 back. So what is the Kia K5? Well, it's the new Optima, plain and simple. Now, I don't know if the Optima needed to be renamed, um, but it has been, so here we are. This is the sister of the Hyundai Sonata, and Kia has managed to make it look really sharp and really good, whereas the Sonata has been a little bit polarizing. Um, while looks are subjective, it is my opinion that the new Sonata is a tough pill to swallow if that's not your cup of tea. Whereas the K5 looks great. Um, they both have a very unique headlight design with this LED um, zigzag on the headlight, a unique treatment, and I just think Kia did a better job at it. The midsize segment has been getting a little bit slower as time goes on, but it's not for a lack of trying. They've gotten better every time there's a refresh, and this is no exclusion. While I love the Optima, it was a great, great package. In fact, I refer to it as my rental car spirit animal. Uh, whenever I have the chance, if I can select the Optima on the lot, that's who Avis is going to get me hooked up with. But the K5 looks a lot better. It looks a little bit like a Stinger in certain angles. Uh, the roofline follows that. The grill is a, the Kia Tiger Shark grill. Um, just really sharp. It looks like it should be a hatchback, but it's not. It's a traditional trunk. Um, part of the trade-off is that the trunk is, the opening's really short now because it's not a hatchback. Um, but it's not a small trunk, it's just a smaller opening, which is a little awkward. If you are dealing with anything that's bulky, think about that before you pick it up. Let's discuss looks. It looks great. The sister car of this, the Hyundai Sonata, looks interesting. This, on the other hand, is a beaut. I'm really happy that they've done the design of this the way they have. It just looks sharp. Uh, it does the thing that I like to do. It carries a body line from the headlight and terminates at the taillight. This GT line has an LED center bar, kind of like the Chargers did in the early 2010s. That same option is here now. The GT line is a $400 option over the base model of the Kia K5. And for that, you get better wheels, you get a better paint color option, which is this blue. You cannot get it on the base trim. You get better seats, and you get this D-shaped steering wheel uh, with good leather wrap on it. It just seems like a no-brainer to me. The base trim comes with the base wheels, which to me look like they were designed with the intention of making the car look cheaper. So just spend the $400 to get the better wheel and tire. Oh my goodness. Let's talk interior for a minute. Something Kia has been good at for a long time in this class is interior ergonomics. Everything lands where it should. Something I've loved with the Optima for a long time is that I get in it and I put my armrest down and my arm just falls right where it should be. I drive it and I start using the infotainment and I feel like I've been using it for years, even if it's the first time I got in that car. This is no exclusion to that. Everything is intuitive. Anyone can drive this. It's easy to drive. I can put my mom in this. Be no problem. Um, the cockpit is focused towards the driver. It is slanted towards you a little bit, but not so much that the, the passenger is, is excluded. I do like that. Um, it does have an electric e-brake, which is unfortunate, but common fare these days. The center console is laid out very well, very intuitive, very simple. Um, you have a charging port, USB port, and a traditional 12 volt outlet. You have your lane keep assist controls over here um, and your trunk release in, on the side. Other than that, uh, interior material choices are okay. They're not the best out there, but they're not the worst at all. There's no rattles, there's no creaks. It doesn't feel cheap, but it doesn't feel high end, and that's that's okay. At 25 grand, I think it's a really happy balance that Kia struck. The speaker grill. This is the base stereo in this car, but the speaker grill mesh looks pretty cool, and I feel like on the higher trim they're going to accent that. Unfortunately, this time, the higher trim models are not available for viewing, but we have the GT line, which looks awesome. You do get dual zone climate control. You do get a uh, Trans Am style T shifter, which is fine. It looks just like the Kia Stinger. Um, you do have drive modes, which exist. My favorite part of this interior is definitely the seats. They are just supportive enough to make you feel like you're being hugged, but not enough to annoy you. They're very comfortable. 
Before we get too far into this, I'd like to thank the guys at Moritz Kia in Fort Worth. They supplied us this car today. Um, these are not available yet in the press fleet, so thank you very much for that. Hope you enjoy it. It does have active uh, lane assist and lane keep, and it does keep you in the lane. And as a person who's not a fan of driver assistance nannies, I like it a lot. It's the first one I've used that hasn't just flat out pissed me off where I just want to turn it off immediately. Um, and most of them, I do want to turn them off immediately. This one's totally fine. It actually works. Uh, it's, I haven't driven something that's this active. You can, as long as you have your hand relatively on the wheel, it will keep you centered in the lane. And it's very good at it. A lot of lane keep assists, uh, systems seem to bounce you from one side of the lane to the other. This one does keep you centered up quite well. It does have a lot of tech. There's a safety suite. It monitors the driver and tells you how alert you are. So if you're getting tired, you've been on a road trip for a long time, it will alert you and, and chime at you. Maybe you need to take a break. And the beauty is all the stuff, you can turn it off. You can cancel it. Um, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. I'm not sure why I need Android Auto. Who uses that anyways? I appreciate a good analog dial. Now this is a mix as a digital cluster in the middle. There's different things you can look at here. You've got tire pressure in all four corners, speed, fuel economy, um, driver awareness, safety alert, lane keep assist. All that's available in the middle and you have traditional tack and speedometer on the outside flanks, which is the way it should be done. Like most cars in this segment, they have grown. Oh, have they grown. Um, the rear seat legroom in this to me feels better than a Kia Stinger. That's how much longer it is. And the Optima wasn't small to start with. Now the trade-off of that wheelbase is that it doesn't turn in quite as well. Um, I've had the chance to drive a lot of Optimas over the years and um, mountain roads, interstates, cities, you name it. And this doesn't feel quite as nimble as the Optima. Um, but for the majority of buyers, they're not gonna notice that or even care. I'm just a weirdo that looks for that kind of stuff. Not to say it drives poorly. Now the chassis does feel a little stiffer than the Optima was, and um, the Optima was no slouch to start with. Let's open it up. It's opened. There are four drive modes, Smart, Normal, Sport, and Custom. Um, the only thing that seems to be affected is the steering uh, stiffness and the powertrain calibration, meaning shift points in the transmission. Turn in is adequate. Um, it's about what you expect from this class. I wouldn't call it better or worse than the comparable Honda Accord. Um, understeer will rear its head. It is there. Um, with a long wheelbase, it does not want to rotate at all, uh, which is okay. This car shouldn't be doing that anyways. It's definitely par for the course. This is the 1.6 liter turbo. There are two engines available, this 1.6 and the 2 liter, I'm sorry, the 2.5 liter turbo. The 1.6 liter has 195 foot pounds of torque and 180 horsepower. And you know Kia is proud of that torque number because they, if you look on their website, they show the torque rating before the horsepower number. Um, historically, it goes horsepower than torque. I uh, find that pretty interesting. All the torque comes in at 1500 RPM and it makes it feel totally fine in traffic. For such a, a small engine and such a big car, it's fine. Um, now when you go to ring it out and open it up, there's not much there beyond 5000 RPM. It really runs out of out of air, uh, the turbo just gives up. But that's okay, that's not what this car is for. Luckily, there will be a 2.5 liter turbo coming out soon that has 290 horsepower and over 300 foot-pounds of torque. Again, they advertise the torque number before the, the uh, horsepower number on that rating. I imagine this car with the 290 horsepower and the sport suspension that the GT will come with uh, is gonna be pretty good. You can tell the bones of this chassis are solid to make this a good driving car with a little more power. I will say of the driving modes, I've been driving around in sport most of the day and I keep looking down to make sure I'm still in sport. Um, it doesn't feel that aggressive. A lot of sport modes are overly aggressive and to the point that they're not, you can't live with them unless you're just being crazy on a mountain road. This one's soft enough you can just drive around daily in sport mode and be fine. Um, normal feels more like eco and sport feels more like normal. But I think for this car, that's totally fine. It's paired with an eight speed automatic which is the only option in the 1.6 liter. The 2.5 liter does get a um, twin clutch DCT transmission with a wet clutch pack, which helps keep it quiet in its action. The GT line trim is more comparable to the Honda Accord Sport trim. And I feel like this is adequately tuned as such. 
Turning radius is excellent, by the way. That's extra points there. So why buy a Kia K5? Well, here's a, uh, an interesting thought. The midsize sedan segment is now an alternate choice to the midsize crossover. Not five years ago was the crossover the alternate to the traditional sedan. Well, Kia's doing a really good job trying to make sure people realize that the sedan is still here and it's still a viable option. It gets better mileage, it handles better, it rides and drives better than most crossovers. The trade-off is you do sit in a car, you're a little bit lower. Uh, your sight lines aren't quite as good as a crossover and that's part of the trade-off too. But at no point do I feel like I'm in a bunker in here. This doesn't feel like a Corvette or um, I don't know, something with a low H line, H point. This feels totally fine. Um, I could put my family in this and, and drive it with, with no issues. No one's gonna complain about it. I think getting in and out is quite easy as well. I and mean, the door, door openings are nice and wide. I don't feel any trade-offs for this roof line. For the aesthetic and good looks of this car, I'm not paying for it in day-to-day -day livability. And I really like that a lot. All right, so who is this car for? It's for anyone that's looking at a Hyundai Santa Fe right now. Um, I really, I really, 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 really hope you would consider a sedan in, in line with a crossover. Now, I get it. If you're dealing with car seats and roof lines are a problem, you need to look at that. Um, as a parent myself, I can tell you right now, if you're shopping for a car, take the car seat with you, put it in the car, see if it makes sense for you or not. But if you commute and you haul kids routinely, this is a great option to consider. Um, I, I urge you to look at the sedan in, in general. Sedan happens to be my favorite configuration of car. Um, in fact, the reason I love my Raptor so much is that it's basically a sedan. It has a very comfortable back seat. I can take adults to lunch. I can do whatever I need to do with it, haul kids, all those things you need to do. The brilliance of a sedan though is that it doesn't drive like a truck. It drives great. All right, I'm gonna try and give it a hipster score. I know Craig's not with me on this one but I'm going to give it a four. And the reasoning why is that it is a small displacement turbo. Um, so it's trying to be good on gas because of that. I don't know that it's doing much better than the 2.4 would have done, um, but I'm sure it's a little bit better. The reason why it's not getting higher than that is that it is, there's no hybrid option, which I find interesting. Uh, I think the Kia Nero is intended to take that. But in terms of the full size sedan, the K5 is not currently offered in a hybrid configuration. So that keeps it from being a five. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna land on a four. I think four is healthy. In conclusion, what do we think of the key to K5? Well, if you told me 20 years ago that Kia was gonna make one of the class leading men's size sedans, I would've told you you were crazy. Kia or Hyundai. They have this history that they've been running from for years. And I think that anyone that looks at a Kia or Hyundai now and discards it because of this past 20 years ago, just hasn't driven one lately. Uh, they've come such a long way, they've got nothing to apologize for. They've done a great job with this car. Now, is it perfect? No, it's not. Uh, it does understeer a bit of the limit, which is to be expected. The interior quality uh, is, is quite good, but it's there's not a lot of soft touch everywhere. It's kind of medium level um, appointments. But for 25 grand, man, it is just, I mean, that, that's civic money. I just. It just makes no sense to me to consider something or to not consider this if you're looking for a car at that price point. If you need to get from A to B, this is a much more interesting way to do it than a lot of its competitors. It looks nothing like its competitors. And that's one of its greatest appeals. I urge you to check it out. Thanks for watching Brake Check. We'll catch you next time.